Today's topic is about an insect that most might find quite harmless, the moth. And to do this, to talk about the moth, we welcome Jennifer Gordon, our resident urban and medical entomologist with Bug Lessons Consulting. Jennifer, welcome back to the program. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. You know, Jennifer, I have to admit, we've done a lot of recordings about insects, bed bugs, spiders. Some of them scare me. Moths, not too much. I imagine there's some big ones out there that can be intimidating. But today, I know our topic is closely related to the cleaning industry on those that can damage clothing and fabric. That's of interest to us. So let's get right into it. What can you tell us about the moth? Yeah, absolutely. So you know me, Jeff. I am just excited to get to talk about any insect. And cloth moths are one of those critters, just like you said, that the cleaning industry plays a very big role in, especially around managing these pests and protecting people's properties and items. But before I get into that, you know, I always like to talk a little bit about what makes these insects special and clothes moths are no, no, no different. There are some pretty cool things to know about them. You know, to begin, they are in the same group as all of the beautiful butterflies outside. And just like their cousins, clothing moths have four life stages, the egg, the larvae or the caterpillar, and then they develop into the pupae or the cocoon stage before finally merging as a tiny dingy brown moth. <laughs> So maybe not as beautiful as monarch or swallowtail butterflies, but the journey from tiny egg to, to a moth is still very impressive. And I'm gonna be talking in general about a couple of different moths that damage clothing and other fabrics, but one of them is commonly called a case-making clothes moth. And I actually had an infestation of these when I lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know, I'm constantly looking for insects and I occasionally started noticing these small whitish gray diamonds crawling over my house. So I captured one and I brought it to an expert I know and he identified it as a case-making clothes moth. And the thing that makes these creatures so interesting to me is that they use materials that they're feeding on in the environment to make a little home or a case that they carry with them wherever they go. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, so many varieties and the damage they can cause, we want to be concerned about that. You know, Jennifer, in our other recordings about insects, we often talk about they invade, you know, they come in and we've got to get rid of them. Is that an issue with moths as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, clothes moths may not be as common as the other pests that we talk about, like cockroaches and ants. But like I said above, um, you know, I've definitely run into them in my personal life at least once. And who knows, you know, maybe more often, you know, I just never found the culprit. You know, I find little holes in my clothing every now and then. And there are a ton of different reasons that could have caused those holes for sure. But in the back of my mind, I always wonder if an insect played a role. But these insects can make their way into homes and buildings by hitchhiking on secondhand items, you know, something that's been bought from a thrift store or a garage sale, or even items brought in from a storage. Uh, they can sometimes fly into homes, you know, depending on the species and the sex, they don't really fly as far or as fast as other moths, but they're still mobile. Okay. So how do they breed and thrive? Yeah. Can they... Can, do they grow quick? Excellent question. Um, I'm calling them clothing moths, but it's actually the larvae or the caterpillar stage, not the flying adult, adult moth stage that causes the damage. And depending on the species, these critters are really looking for items made from animal materials, such as wool, hair, and fur. There is a species that may attack some plant type products like tobacco, herbs, hemp, etc. but they're less common in the United States and they still prefer those animal items. Mm -hmm. So the larvae feed on these items and that are made from animal materials and the duration of the larval stage can really depend based on the food in the environment, but they can last as a larvae anywhere from a month or maybe even a couple of years. You know, like I said, it really depends, but eventually the larvae transform into pupae before emerging as adults. And then the female mates with the male pretty soon after she emerges, begins laying eggs until those eggs hatch in a larvae. And then the cycle starts all over again. Okay. So uh, they have, they eat clothing, protein fibers, I imagine, especially. What about survival? Uh, do they need a certain temperature? Can you talk about that? 
Sure. Um, you know, like most of the insects we've talked about, the clothing moths really only need food, shelter, warmth, and humidity. But unfortunately for us, when we have an infestation, our buildings and our possessions are providing the things the moths need to survive. Okay. Big question is, you got them? How do you get rid of them? Yep. Great question. You know, like I said before, the cleaning industry can play a huge role in getting rid of these bugs and preventing them from damaging people's items. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, I have to say, if an infestation is detected, contacting a pest management professional may be necessary because there are a bunch of different moths that people can encounter in a building. And you really need to be able to identify the exact species and implement the right control program to eradicate the infestation. But even then, thorough cleaning is going to play a huge role in getting rid of this pest. Uh, first and foremost, these moths aren't going to be interested in attacking items in areas that have high foot traffic. These items are too disturbed for the moths and the larvae to be happy. So the larvae are going to prefer attacking items in storage or items that are generally less disturbed by people. So this means natural items like wool blankets need to be cleaned very well and brushed off before being put into storage. It also means that cleaning under items like couches and tables to get rid of animal fur and other animal products needs to be very thorough. Uh, additionally, natural items need to be inspected on a regular basis, which can be a job for our cleaning detectives. You know, during routine cleaning, just keeping an eye out for the telltale signs of the moth, like damaged materials, silken cocoons, the caterpillars themselves. And if you see any of these signs, alerting the homeowners or property managers can go a long way. Uh, I actually published a couple of articles in some ISSA magazines outlining a protocol to record and report any suspected insect findings. <clears throat> You know, in them, I didn't call out clothes moths in particular, but a lot of the information in that protocol can be used here. Mm -hmm. um, periodic professional cleaning of carpets and rugs is going to be important and can eliminate many different types of soils that the moths like and even the critters themselves. Again, just make sure you're really cleaning the area and moving heavy items out of the way to access any hard to reach nooks and cranny. And finally, after these, you know, kind of more specific tips, Good sanitation in general is just so important to manage these pests. Vacuuming is very important. Also cleaning areas that you might not always think about, such as air ducts, wall voids, light fixtures, insulation, and other hidden areas like that. Good information. Um, you know, often we talk about the public health aspect of insects. Does that even apply with moths? Well, the good news is, is that clothing moths don't bite or sting mm. people. But like we've talked about, they can damage people's possessions and sometimes very expensive items. And I don't know about you, Jeff, but when something I own gets damaged or destroyed, that can definitely stress me out. So even though these moths don't directly harm people, they can still have an effect, which sucks. Mm -hmm. But like always, I'm here. So if you ever have any questions or want to learn how to focus your cleaning tips or how to create a cleaning inspection report, reach out to me on LinkedIn. All right. Sounds good. What can we talk about next time? Yeah, that's a great question. A little bit of a, a teaser. Uh, I think we'll talk about some stored product pests and maybe talk about another kind of moth people might run into. All right. Nothing worse than opening a container and oops, what's going on in there? <laughs>